Yeah. Hey there YouTube community, my name is Jeff and welcome to my channel. That video that you just watched was my 1990 Volkswagen Transporter Synchro. 3.1 liter petrol engine it and I've named it Cuckoo Cachoon. I've owned it for over 10 years, maybe 12 some odd years. And yeah, I've been slowly restoring here uh, as time and funds allow, ultimately with the end goal of putting uh, an engine conversion that's a bit more modern, powerful, and reliable. With the vision of that, um, I started first off a few years ago, modifying and upgrading the suspension system. Now, and suspension and drivetrain. So through Samba, I've been following for years, um, all roads pointed towards kind of Burley Motorsport for a refined suspension system and well thought out. And so, I went with Burley Motorsport system. So that was really good. Um, I went with the full, full hog, I guess you would say. You got the suspension, which was the shocks, the springs, the upper control arms. Uh, but because I'm also thinking of getting a, a stronger engine with more torque and horsepower, I decided to upgrade the CV axles. So the front has the Synchro 16 with larger axles and the rear upgraded to the Porsche style with bigger axles. So that will help with the torque and the higher articulation angles that these axles will see with a lifted Synchro. I'm not gonna lie, that took a lot of time and money because the place I was living at was literally, was working in the backyard and grass and gravel. So I was getting burnt. Any screw or bolt I dropped, I'd have to go scavenging through the there, I ended up getting a magnet, that saved a lot of time, but ultimately it put me into a restores hibernation. So I was out for a couple of years, um, recovering from that um, and exploring with the van, which um, that suspension has been working great. Um, last year I emerged from that uh, restores hibernation. Is that even a thing? I don't, is that even a thing? I don't know. but. Yeah, so I came through there with some savings built up and some time and energy to think about the next stage, which is the body and rust of the van. So I wanted new paint. Um, and I decided I was gonna go full interior, exterior paint job, um, but that's a specialist equipment and I don't have a paint booth. I don't have experience painting and I wanted to have a good finish um, to see me around Australia next year when I go traveling. So I found a restore uh, with 20 years experience uh, with photos shared and discussions had, um, he felt he could make my vision a reality. So uh, then I started stripping Cuckoo down to a shell. Um, and then I put her on a flatbed and sent her to the restorer's shed. I'm not gonna lie, this is the first time I sent my van to someone else to work on. And so I was a little bit nervous. Uh, but after three months, the job was done. I went out there a couple days to help with some prep work and removing some insulation that I left. I didn't have enough time to remove. And yeah, three months later, uh, the van's finished. At that stage though, I was in WA for a holiday. Um, so I organized a flatbed to then return it uh, back to my house to be undercover. And then when I came back, um, first thing I thought was like color perfect. That color scheme works great. I've been very happy. It was a Porsche green that I've chosen um, and it just really suits that shape of the van. But then started looking closer and Cuckoo was not looking very good. Oh yeah, nice from afar, but far from nice. Started out with the paint. The paint had swirl marks in it uh, from being cut down. The paint also had swirl sand marks in it from poor prep work. Um, drips, we had, I had paint runs both in the top coat and in the primer that I see um, that gooped down some of the trailing edges. Um, 
paint was cut back so flat that the primer was showing through. Um, that's just, just not much paint there. If I ever wanted to clean it or buff it myself, just unacceptable. Um, and then the panels that would need to be replaced um, weren't aligned appropriately. And unfortunately, my front grille no longer fits in the front nose area. So that has to be removed again and redone. Um, and then the panels that were welded, um, the weld looked like bubble gum and bird poo, like with bits of MIG wire hanging off of. So it was just really poor quality. And even those welds and some panels were not even painted on the backside. So obviously rust has already taken a, a stronghold from before it even ended. So this just kind of made me a little bit unsettled. Um, there was some missing parts. Um, from door pins, dash bolts, um, even wires to the hatch were cut so the door could be removed. Um, yeah, so, and even my mounting hardware for the headlights uh, is not, wasn't put onto the lower nose bit, so I can't even mount the headlights. So the whole thing needs to be redone. Basically, long story short, he's gotten paid in full um, and He's blocked me all forms of communication. He's kicked me off of a T3 form here in Australia, um, a Facebook form. Um, and basically the last clip communication, he told me that I should have done it myself and I'd only have myself to blame. Personally, I think it was a bit of a rich comment, um, but that's what it is. Um, so now I'm starting to sand it back. And my friends think I'm a little bit crazy after all the work and money I've put into it to send it back to where it was last year. So um, I'm trying to make peace from a very sour situation. Um, um, and it's a little bit cathartic in doing this work um, and just getting lost in sanding, block sanding. And block sanding has been a bit rewarding, but it also revealed some more, more problems in the prep work that was done. Lots of highs and lows that were never addressed. Um, I was using makeshift blocks um, block sanders at first, um, but eventually came across, uh, what are these? Durablocks. Dura blocks. These are a game changer. They really have helped me out tremendously in ensuring I get a nice, for these big transporter panels, I get a long, good, flat panel with these sandings. And this is a bit stiff and it's only really good for those big door panels and stuff on the side. So these little guys are good to help for finishing in the corners and hard to reach. And my favorite one, it just feels nice to use, is this little bendy one. It's a fantastic little guy here. So I'll see if I can put these here in a link with the models in the description for you guys if you're interested in looking at something like that. But they've been fantastic. Um, so that's pretty much where I'm at. I'm starting kind of scratch again uh, to where I was. Um, if you find the excuse me, if you find that the journey of this interests you of, of my restoration process, please subscribe to the channel. Um, I'll try to be a little bit more diligent in making more videos. But um, if you've enjoyed this video, um, give it a like. Please let me know if you are in the middle of a project for your van. Any tips or hints or things that you can share or your experiences. Um, I'll try to share mine as well and see if we can help each other to get through our projects. So um, yeah, I've got an interesting engine conversion coming up in the next few months. So I'll prepare for some of that video and I'm looking forward to that install. So uh, until next time, thanks for watching and hope you're well. Take care, bye-bye.